Today we're gonna head into Canyonlands National Park, and I'm excited. You can see the sun just barely starting to make itself known over there. All right, we have the moment of truth coming up in about half a mile. Let's see how full this parking lot is. I'm guessing there are gonna be quite a few cars there. Holy cow. <laughs> yep, lots of people. So I'm at the Mesa Arch Trailhead in Canyonlands National Park. This is the place to be for like an epic sunrise photo in the greater Moab area. You've probably seen a picture before of like the sun rising up underneath an arch that's this. I have pictures of this arch at sunrise on my TV, like the screensaver um, has pictures of this arch. So it's a really famous spot. And it's one of those places that looks beautiful and tranquil and peaceful. But in reality, there are like a hundred other photographers around you. And uh, so that's what we have to look forward to. The hike there is a loop and it's less than a mile round trip. So it'll take 15 minutes or so to get out there and come back. This is one of, I think, four things I want to do today in Canyonlands National Park. One of four trails, and I've never done any of them before. I've been to Canyonlands several times. I've made three or four videos about it already. I'll put those in the description of the video if you want to check those out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this, is, this is a nightmare. Oh my gosh. This is the reality behind Instagram. All right, mission accomplished. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, worth doing once for the spectacle, but I uh, don't think I'll be coming back anytime soon. I think if we came during the day, it would be much, uh, probably much less crowded, but right at sunrise, people are just scrambling to get that money shot. So that took 20 minutes exactly. It was 0.7 miles round trip, and I'm driving up the road now about six miles up the road, six or seven miles up the road to our next destination. All right, let's compare the parking lot here to the parking lot at the Mesa Arch Trailhead. Much nicer, three cars. Grand View Point, we'll go to the Overlook first, which is just a few hundred feet away, and we'll go walk another mile out to the point. Then from the overlook, the trail goes down here, it looks like, and maybe goes out along here to this point. Okay, we've made it to the top, slash end. So this is the way I came, the parking area is over here. Trail went along this way. Whew. And this is the view from Grand View Point, I believe this is called. Lives up to its name. These are the Abajo Mountains over here on the horizon. Those rise up near Monticello. Check out all of these spires and rock formations down in here. These are the LaSalle Mountains. I was up there a couple days ago. And that's it. I do want to point out these mountains over here on the horizon. These are the Henry Mountains. And I'm going to be camping there 
tonight. I have a goal to climb the highest point in each county in Utah. I have one left, and I believe it is this over here. One of these points in that mountain range. And then of course you've also got the view down. Probably four or five hundred feet. Not for the squeamish, not for the faint of heart, not for those with the fear of heights. All right, let's head back. All right, our next trail goes to the top of this rock formation. It's called Whale Rock. Am I the only one here? All right, this is how I like it. Whale Rock Trail. People have always enjoyed naming the fanciful rock formations in canyon country. From a distance, the long curving spine of this butte resembles the profile of a whale. This trail is one mile round trip. Shouldn't take more than an hour to do. I'm just churning through these trails. I'll easily be out of the park here by, uh, I don't know, 11, noon? It's 9.15 right now. I think we're heading to the top of this here, or maybe over here, I'm not entirely sure. I've not done this before. Alright guys, I am on top of the whale. This is a great little hike. For being a... I mean, it only took me 15 minutes to get up here. And for being such a short hike, I mean, it doesn't get much better. A good chunk of the hike is, uh, is on the slick rock, and you get to stand on top of a rock formation. What more do you need in a short hike? It would be great for kids if you could keep them from, you know, wandering off the edge here. But if they're responsible, then it's a great little hike. On to the next one. This last place we're going to in Canyonlands National Park is called Upheaval Dome. And um, it's basically a big crater. And there are two theories on how the crater was formed. One is that uh, it's a meteorite impact crater. So a meteorite hit it and that is what formed the crater and it's been eroding. Uh, over time ever since. And then the second theory is that it's the eroded remnants of a salt dome. So basically salt, a lot of salt from underneath the earth rose up through the, the crust and pushed the uh, pushed the rock up and then I guess the salt eroded away and it left a crater behind. I think the consensus, at least on the National Park website, was that it's a meteorite impact crater. So that's the, the theory that I'm going with and it's more interesting than salt. So uh, we're gonna hike to uh, a viewpoint that's just a short distance from the parking lot here. And then um, similar to Grand Viewpoint, we're gonna hike another mile or so out to another viewpoint to where we can uh, apparently get also another good view of the crater itself. This is interesting. These people have used a bike rack on the back to hold a couple of lawn chairs, a couple of camp chairs. It's a good idea. So here's the trailhead. And this is what the dome looks like from the air. We are here, we're gonna to go to the first overlook and then onto the second overlook to get a view of the crater here. And it is 1.8 miles round trip to the second overlook. All right, we are at the first overlook, 150 feet over here. And after that, we'll head on to the second one. Here's a panorama of the crater. I think it's kind of hard to get a good look at the whole crater like in one image when you're viewing it in a picture or even in video here. When we get to the next lookout, I'll get the GoPro out which has a wider angle lens and we'll use that to take a panoramic shot for you. Alright, 
looks like we have arrived at the second and final overlook. All right, so yeah, this is just a weird thing. This is really cool looking. So this is the, the rim of the crater right here, coming around back to where I am. And this is with the GoPro. Maybe it'll help you get a better idea of what it's like. I don't know, but still cool. And don't you wonder how many selfie sticks and phones and hats are down there? All right, guys, I think we're done here, done in the National Park. Gonna hike back and then drive on back to Moab and then uh, we might see a couple more things back in Moab. But for now, I'm happy to have come here to Canyonlands. It's a beautiful place and definitely worth visiting. All right, we're about 15 minutes outside of Moab up Cane Creek. And uh, I wanted to stop and see some rock art that I haven't seen before. This is called the birthing scene because there is someone giving birth right there. This is really easy to access from the road. As you can hear behind me, there's a, the road is right there. This looks like Darth Vader a little bit. And we've got some footprints and some animals and some squiggly lines. I like these footprints down here. Let's go around the other side here, see if there's anything over here. You know, I've driven up this road several times, but I've never actually stopped to look at the, the pictographs here. These are cool. So there's, there are figures on all sides of the boulder, but it's, uh, it's that birthing scene that is the most well-known one on this rock. So birthing rock is right there. And if you walk up the road a little bit, there's another boulder right here. Let's see. Yep. Looks like a leaf or plant of some sort. Some squiggly lines. I'm gonna go back into town, get some more supplies, get gas, and then uh, we're gonna hit the road to that other mountain range. I don't think I'll see you again in Moab, but I'll show you the scenery between here and, uh, and that mountain range that I'm heading to and that I'll camp in tonight. This is just awesome. I believe this is the mountain I'll be climbing up tomorrow. I'm at 10,500 feet right here. This is looking back out the way I came. There's a sign that says Bull Creek Pass, elevation 10,500 feet. I was hoping there would be a campsite up here, but there's not. Um, there were several campsites that I passed down lower. I'll go down the other side of the pass, and if I uh, if I can't find anything 
any place to camp down here in the next mile or so, then I'll, I'll turn back around. But yeah, here's a sneak preview of tomorrow and of, uh, of the next video, I guess. <laughs> All right, guys, I found a campsite. So here is my little campsite on the edge of the world. At least that's what it seems like. Just gorgeous, gorgeous country up here. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite part was and I will see you in the next one.